Don't pause too long that it becomes habit. Don't pause too long that it becomes comfortable. Don't pause too long that you get stuck in excuses. Don't pause too long that you just cool with procrastination. Don't pause too long that your complaints overly consume the steps needed to be successful moving forward. Don't pause too long that you miss the greatest opportunity that might present itself to you. Don't pause too long that you surround yourself with people who pause as well because then it just adds to where you pause even more. It's where I used to be at one point. I enjoyed the hesitation, the level of being trapped, the level of mediocrity, the level of average, the level, the level of procrastination, the level of I don't feel like it right now, the level of this is not my day so I'll wait for another opportunity. I was pausing so long that it just became real cool and I was just chilling. I mastered the art of pausing which many of us do right now. You pause so many times that you are afraid to do something else. You're afraid to take that leap of faith. You're afraid to move forward. I was recently asked, what would you do if you didn't receive a two week check? Ooh, I almost paused. And I did for one split second, but it felt like it was a long time because I went back in that level of what I used to do where it seemed longer and became where I was just chilling and procrastinating. I was asked that question recently and I paused for a quick second. I said, you know what? I got to apply pressure if I can't receive a two week check. Because what I make it in two weeks, I can make it in the one day or the two days or the three days in less time with more effort. Working smarter, not harder. A lot of people say that. It's cool to work hard. It's another level of working smarter. I never got to that point before, but I'm at that point now. If I can get what I want in one, two, three, four days time, in less time working as hard and smarter, then that two week check is null and void. It doesn't matter to me anymore because now I've applied so much self-created pressure to myself, I'm gonna start shining just like a diamond. Because a diamond comes out of depths of the darkness, where I come from, where you come from. And then when it comes out of the depths of the darkness, it just begins, it looks a certain way and it's formed a certain way and it shines a certain way. And then when you put it on your finger or your ear or your neck or wherever it may be, it shines a particular way. The same way we do when we come out of the depths of our own self-created darkness our self-created pain, our self-created struggle, the things that we need to overcome. It's us tapping in further and going deeper. It's us apply applying the pressure needed for us to shine and win moving forward. So what it is that you need to accomplish and you should accomplish is taking that leap of faith. Not the fear, not the fear, not the hesitation, not the procrastination, not the pause, but taking that leap of faith, knowing that you can work harder and smarter and love it and love, and love, love, love what it is that you do. It's something that I, have, I gotta embrace, it's something that you gotta embrace. Whether that is in your job, in your career, in the sports you play, in the way you coach, in the way you teach, and whatever it may be, as a parent, whatever it is, you gotta apply pressure that so you, you can come out of the depths of the dark and shine a particular way because you have a particular gift to shine like no other. It's called 3 here and if you can apply pressure enough, self-created pressure, you can get through. If you can apply that same pressure, you can break through. With that being said, if continue to apply pressure, you can win through. And ultimately, that self-created pressure is going to have you shine in a certain way. And you're going to be winning.
and you're going to stay winning no matter what.